can make this the, the best event that we can. Uh, the Deputy Council General from the Dutch Consulate in, um, in Chicago, uh, Mr. Kors Hirschbach, is from uh, Rotterdam. He is a, uh, a Feyenoord fan, so any Ajax or PSV fans, please, <laughs> please keep the heckling to a minimum. He is going to do a fantastic uh, job um, today, teaching you guys, showing you guys about Holland and Rotterdam. So please give him your undivided attention. Um, we, uh, are there going to be any questions afterwards? Or? Any, any way okay, you like well, that. please hold your questions until afterwards. I'm sure some of you have some things rolling through your brains. So, and without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Corsair's talk. Thank you, Chuck. <clears throat> Thank you, Chuck, um, for the introduction, your kind words. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, um, and um, it's exciting when I first heard from Ali, actually, uh, and she introduced me to Chuck, that a team from, you could say, my neck of the woods was going to my hometown. I am from Rotterdam, and as we say in Holland, uh, I'm a Rotterdammer. Uh, what you will find in, uh, in, in Rotterdam that the accent is a very pronounced rolling R, uh, which, uh, which distinguishes a Rotterdammer from the rest of the country. Um, I brought with me a, uh, a DVD, which uh, is about 19, 20 minutes about Rotterdam. Now what you'll see is obviously, it's a bit of a promotional piece, so what you'll see is the best sides of Rotterdam. And there are some really good sides about Rotterdam. Obviously you might, um, you probably will see some lesser good sides of Rotterdam, but those are for you to experience while you're there. Um, it's a great place, it's a great town. I grew up there uh, and had a, a wonderful time. And as Chuck mentioned, Feyenoord coming from Rotterdam, there are two, really two teams that you can, uh, you can support, it is Sparta, uh, and, uh, and Feyenoord. Feyenoord is on the south side of Rotterdam. Sparta is on the, on the west side of Rotterdam. Uh, and I actually played for Sparta myself, but not foot, as we say, football. I'm, if I say football, I mean soccer, of course. And I said earlier, we'll probably have to agree to disagree on that, because for me it's football and for you it's soccer. Uh, but with Sparta, I actually played baseball. Uh, what not a lot of many people know uh, outside the Europe, uh, especially in America, is that in Europe, Baseball doesn't mean an awful lot, except the Netherlands and Italy. Um, uh, just a little bit about baseball. It, uh, um, because basically, Italy and the Netherlands, it's either one of these two countries which will be the European champion. Um, and we feel we're the better nation than the Italians because they just get all these Italians in, you know, American, they give them the Americans, they're really from America, play in all sorts of leagues here and the Italians give them a passport so they can play in the national team. We don't do that. We just, well, a few people from Aruba perhaps that will come <laughs> and join us. And they're pretty good sluggers as well. Anyway, um, I suggest that uh, we just watch the DVD. Um, afterwards, I can, uh, I can tell you a little bit more my, about Rotterdam, about the Netherlands. Uh, I've brought some, uh, some goodies. Um, it's it's uh, some bags with uh, some promotional material, uh, pen, post-its with a Holland logo on it. There's also a, a business magazine which we used to promote, which we used to promote the Netherlands as a trading nation, uh, which is not necessarily uh, of interest to you. But there is one perhaps nice thing about it. There's an interview with Marco van Basten. Marco van Basten is obviously one of the best football players ever, um, but he's also the, the coach of our national team. Uh, so we thought that might be nice for you. Um, so let's play the DVD and afterwards we can perhaps, uh, any questions you might have and things I can tell you, uh, I'd be more than happy to do so.
om 7. Maar begin je, maar eindig je. Er is een ding niks. Zijn er eigenlijk wel woorden voor? There is an English version of this as well. I, I don't expect you to understand it. Yeah. No, no it, it should, it should be. Good. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Is it a river and movable the bridge? Fluent Dutch, fluent English, fluent German, the flow of foreigners. All the oceans of the world flow to Rotterdam. The city is a conspiracy of three rivers. The Rotter, rural and shady, which gave the city its name, and the Rhine and the Maas, which connect the city to the hinterland. Water enabled Rotterdam to flourish.
you, Notre Dame. By being inspired by the city's history and culture. Because a city, which is the center of the world's oceans, has many treasures. through a city with a diameter of 40 kilometers, by discovering the film festival, or the architectural biennial, the photo biennial, the Gergia festival, or by experiencing that uneasy feeling that you have missed something, because there's always something going on. Down. By 
investing in the knowledge economy, the financial service sector, the medical sector, art, culture, in short, in your own future. My name is Jeffy, I come out to the mirror and I study audiovisual form on the Gabi Lyceum. Yeah. Toi Timela Van, toi Eindhoven, toi die Hulk Rotterdam, all the last days here, restaurateur. Hi, I'm Karina, I'm from Cardiff and I study in Rotterdam at the Willem de Koning Academy. I am Maarten Huning and I study fine arts. And I study at the Rotterdam Dance Academy. Я живу в Роттердаме, учусь в бизнес-школе. Мне очень нравится жить здесь, я приехал из Украины. I'm from Liberia, and I'm studying economics at Brussels University in Rotterdam. The MBO Theater School in Rotterdam. Opleiding Tourism. Ik studeer geneeskunde aan de Middelbare Universiteit in Rotterdam. Uit je tenen. How do you Rotterdam? By sharing the city's ambitions with 160 nationalities. Holy Mother Festival. Aku.
you, Rotterdam? By eating, by drinking, by living. Well, it gave you a little bit of an idea about Rotterdam. Um, and unfortunately, there wasn't an awful lot of fine wood in it, of course, but um, I'm sure you'll... Um, I, I understand Chuck just told me that you'll be playing in the, uh, the final stadium and, ex and Excelsior as well, you just said. Yeah, actually, the, if, the, the games are going to be at the Barkenord uh, training okay, complex right sure. next to the Next to the stadium, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um, which is nice. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, Feyenoord is a is a club with a long tradition in the, in Dutch football. Um, they were the first one to win the European Cup. Um, I remember that as a as a small boy that when they did that, because Ajax were the first ones to reach the finals, but never made never won the cup. And Rotterdam did. Uh, eventually, Ajax became uh, much more successful in winning it again. But we still claim to be the first ones that did it. So which was in 1970 against Benfica, and his, the score was two to one, so. Um, but I won't bore you with all those facts. Um, Rotterdam, yeah, I think Rotterdam is very much a city that, uh, like Chicago, that works. Uh, it's a no-nonsense city. Uh, you take Amsterdam, it's, it's a very much more, yeah, what you say, ex, uh, extravagant city, much more outgoing city. Rotterdam is just, get on with it. One of the jokes is that in, in Rotterdam we sell the shirts, like I'm wearing, with the, roll, the sleeves already rolled up so you can get stuck in straight away once you put it on. Um, it's basically, in, in Rotterdam we earn the money for the Netherlands, in The Hague they decide where it goes because that's the Washington, that's the government seat, and in Amsterdam they just spend it. That's, that's what they do there. Um, the Dutch, if, talk a little bit about the Dutch. I mean, my, my wife is British and um, we obviously lived in the Netherlands for a number of times as well. I travel around the world with my job. I've been to several countries and continents. And when we lived in The Hague, um, we were also in the expat community because our children were going to the British school. And my son actually played soccer at the, an American club there, which is called the ABF, the American Baseball Foundation. It started off at baseball, but they play soccer as well for the kids. Um, 
And there's a, there's a book which has been written by American expats living in, who have lived in The Hague and an the environment there, and it's called The Undutchables. And it's very funny to read about yourself as a, as a, as a Dutchman, observations made by foreigners. Uh, and they're so true. Uh, and my wife actually said it as well. I said, why do you do this? I mean, simple things. You, you go into a birthday party, and a very Dutch birthday party, I see Ali's already smiling because she knows what's coming. It's you sit around in a circle, and you have coffee, and you have cake, and I come in as a newcomer to the, to, the, to the party, and I will congratulate everyone in the room with your birthday. And my wife could never understand that. She said, why? It's not your birthday. Or his, it's his birthday. I will congratulate that person. It's those little quirky things. You know when you've really connected and clicked with, with, a, with, a, with a, well, you're in with a Dutchman or a Dutch family when they invite you to their home. Um, they, they can be a bit standoffish to some extent, um, but once you get past that and they'll, they'll be friendly, they'll be, they'll be nice people, I think. Um, they're also very direct. So um, being the slightly British influence uh, with, with my wife over the last 18 years, uh, the British are very reserved and they're very flowery with their language and they're very careful with what they say. The Dutch, we don't care about that. We just want to tell you how it is and how we feel about it and what we do is the right way to do it. And famous is, or infamous really, is the thing that I told you so. It's that sort of attitude um, that, that doesn't always get us a lot of kudos in the world, but we think we're right in a lot of ways. Um, uh, but it sparks discussion, it sparks sort of exciting things sometimes to happen. Um, good places, you, you'll be based in Rotterdam. You'll be staying in Rotterdam as well? Yes. Um, and uh, any, near the uh, Erasmus we're University there? Yeah, we're right, right next to it at, okay. um, at the uh, Brain Park, Novotel Okay, Park. yes. Um, Rotterdam is, is, um, has gone through quite a, f uh, a, a phase of reconstruction. As it was mentioned, during the Second World War, the center of Rotterdam was bombed by the Germans and it had to be rebuilt. Um, what you'll see in the center of Rotterdam is, is not very many older or old buildings. They might be in an American context, but we go back a little bit longer uh, in Europe than, than you do here. So if you go to other places like Delft, The Hague, Amsterdam, you'll see buildings that are hundreds of years old. Uh, not so much in the center of Rotterdam. You see a lot of new buildings. During the 70s, it was sort of decided, 80s, they said, whoa, this looks really awful, you know, after the world, Second World War, building, architecture. So there's been a revitalization of the whole concept of Rotterdam uh, as in, in an urban planning sense. And now Rotterdam is really, worldwide is famous uh, for a number of brilliant architectural uh, buildings and, and the bridge you see coming back a number of times with the, 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 the spiral of the wires is a very famous bridge uh, um, designed by Dutch architect Ben van Berkel. Um, and as it happens, uh, uh, Dutch architecture, Dutch design is, is, uh, is very much uh, yeah, in favor worldwide. Um, as, as a little sidestep, uh, for the second time uh, in two years now, we, at the end of this month, the Dutch consulate is organizing a, an architecture symposium uh, at IIT, Illinois Institute of Technology, together with the College of Architecture there, and some other people. Uh, and it's going to be about sustainable water trunks, because we very much believe in sustainability uh, in, in a way, as a way of life as well, um, but in, in the whole society. Um, go, down to Ro go down to the center of Rotterdam. Um, the Central World Times got a, many, many great things about it. And from where you will be staying, you can just hop on the tram and you can all the way, go all the way down to the center. Um, it's very much a city which is uh, evolving around water. Uh, it's a bit like Chicago, it's on the waterfront, but Rotterdam lives and breathes and thrives because of the water. As it was mentioned, it's the largest port in the world, up until recently. We, we've been overtaken by one of the Asian ports, I believe it was Singapore or Hong Kong, one of those. But it's like measuring which is the tallest building in the world. You do it, sometimes it's CS Tower, sometimes it's CN Tower. It depends on what you calculate with it, the spiral, the tower, whatever. So it's still a very large port, the second largest then in the world. And everything really, all the actions, everything that happens in Rotterdam is, is very closely related to the water. Um, and that, that makes the people there appreciate it very much. There's, for instance, there's a sort of water taxi. I know you have some of them in Chicago, but there's been an institution in Rotterdam for, for, for many, many years. Um, 
go down to the center of Rotterdam. There's a lot of new things going on there, a lot of bars. I know it's different here. I think you can't drink until you're 21. We're slightly more relaxed about that in Holland, although I'm promoting that you go and get yourself <laughs> smashed or drunk. Or, uh, I, I'm, you're in the capable hands of Chuck, I'm sure. That, uh, and as sportsmen, I'm sure you're not interested in that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I, I wouldn't know, but... Um, there is none, I think. I, I don't think there is any real yeah. limit. Um, <laughs> I was younger than most of you guys when I was definitely getting a few beers in. But, um, <laughs> only a few. Um, <laughs> but it's it, one of the things that I... Uh, weird things. I'm just, I'm just telling you things off the cuff. I mean, you have questions, just raise your hand and... I'll answer them if I can. Um, you saw people eating French fries, patat, as it's called, chips. Um, what we do is we put mayonnaise on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's yeah. weird to you, isn't it? I mean, Belgium is, is, is very much the same. Yeah, uh, they're good people, the Canadians. Um, uh, even weirder, we put peanut sauce on our chi on our fries as well. Thai. Thai. Yeah, a bit thicker, but uh, that's great. Well, one of the things that you definitely need to try is, is Indonesian food. Uh, there's, not some, there's not much of a Dutch cuisine, if you want to call it. The French and the Italians, and they all have their type of food. We don't have it so much. What we have is, is very stodgy, wintry type food, which you don't want to, which you don't want to try even. Uh, so what we, what we can claim to be the, the, the closest to the Dutch cuisine is, is Indonesian food. And you'll find many, many Indonesian restaurants all over town, uh, in Rotterdam as well, absolutely. Some are, are combined Chinese, Indonesian, they'll, they'll see that on, on the window. Uh, try and find on, an only Indonesian one. There's a really good one, it used to be a good one in the center of Rotterdam, the name escapes me. And it's called, well, the best thing to do is called a rijst tafel, it's a rice table. It's a Dutch invention when we colonized, uh, when we were the colonizers in Indonesia uh, a couple hundred years ago, up until 1948. Um, and it's basically, you order a rice tafel, and so you don't have to go through the whole menu, and they'll give you like 10, 12 different dishes, all little bits of everything. So then you get a real good flavor for it. Um, so that's one of the things I would definitely recommend to do. Is there, is there a big Suriname? Um, Suriname community? community. There's, an, there's a very big Suriname community in Rotterdam. Uh, again, that's, that's part of the food that you can get there as well. Um, what we have is uh, snack bars, if you're sort of like the f our fast food is, of course, you have McDonald's and all that sort of stuff. But our Dutch fast food, you could say, is a snack bar. And in that, you can get your French fries, but you can all sorts of other deep fried weird things. For you, weird things. For us, <laughs> it's like your hot dog and your hamburger and that sort of thing. But uh, give it a try. It's fun. It's, uh, it's just it, is there, because, because our game is so associated with uh, water, is, is there a part of the city that is you know, ha has that kind of, uh, where, where you have restaurants with tables on the water, or is the water more a, a business, you know, kind of kind of setting? It's uh, both, it's it. both. Uh, you'll, you'll have along the waterfront at various places, areas where you'll have uh, terraces, bars, restaurants. Um, you're going in October, of course, October so 9th. I'm not sure if you'll be able to sit outside still, uh, if the terraces will be up. but. It's, it might be possible. If it's a good day, then you, they'll, they'll put, the, put it out. Because the Dutch like sitting outside and being outside. <coughs> oh, I don't know. Um, Rain? Could be. Could be, yeah. Um, compared to, sorry? Oh, yes, you should, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a bit unpredictable. In, in, in autumn, in fall, uh, um, it could be a really nice day. But nothing compared to here. I mean, what I first noticed, I've been here for two years now in Chicago, and I mean, the first winter we experienced was just awful. I mean, it was just amazing. <laughs> I've never experienced anything like that. I mean, I was, before this, I was three years in the Netherlands stationed, and before that, I was uh, six years in the tropics, in Kenya and in Indonesia. So my children had never experienced the severe winter. They were born while we were in the tropics. Um, so it was amazing to see that it goes like, in Celsius, minus 37, which is, extremely cold for us. Um, second winter here has been better for me, I have to get used to it. But the summers are actually much, much nicer here. Because in, in the Netherlands, in, in that part of Europe, it's a bit wishy-washy, you know? It's, it's, you can't count on a, on a good winter, you can't count on a good summer. 
and spring and fall are, you know, can be good, can be okay, but yeah, so it's, it, I can't really, what, first thing I noticed when I was here, when I came here was that how good the, the, the weathermen are in predicting the weather. Because <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. In Holland, everyone talks about the weather like you do worldwide, but I said, oh, well, it's just it's one of those topics for conversation. It's funny. And it's never going anywhere because you never gonna know, you never know what it's going to be like. We, we always talk about how the weathermen here, uh, that must be the best job in the world because you can be wrong 365 mm -hmm. days a year. Oh, go to Holland. It's okay. worse. It's worse. So. Now, is, it, is it like England? Where there, there was a question uh, here, I believe, as well. Oh, oh okay. It, it, is, it, um, is it like England where uh, the, the sun just never shines or oh, no. because of where you're, uh, where Holland is on the other side of the channel, it, it, maybe the sun will, mm -hmm. will make a better presence? I, I feel I have to defend the UK a little bit as well because of my link to them, but uh, it, it's not that bad in the okay. UK, but uh, <laughs> Scotland is. You know, Scotland, that's, that's, and then parts of Ireland, are, are, there's a lot of rain there. Um, actually, this, the south of England is lower than the Netherlands is. So, um, yeah, there will be rain, there will be sun, there will be wind. Be prepared for wind. It's that, that's something that, because that, uh, it's flat, it's close to the sea, uh, you'll get more wind than you find here. No extreme cold, though. No extreme colds, no. 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 Not, not, not to what not you're used to cold. here, absolutely. So, another thing about, about, about soccer, about football, I mean, you, you might have heard about the, uh, the soccer fans in, in Europe, that they're quite a, uh, vicious bunch. There can be. Some of the countries uh, are, are, very, are fairly infamous, of course. Uh, uh, the UK, England uh, in front, uh, and the Dutch, I have to say, some of the cities are, are not, some of the teams are not too, you know, too good either in that sense. Um, you won't experience that, of course, because you're not in, in that surrounding of a Dutch competition and a Dutch club. But um, the fans are very, very much committed to their teams. And um, it's we, the, the only big sport we have in the Netherlands and I suppose in the whole of Europe is football, soccer. Whereas here you have a number of them, uh, baseball, basketball, hockey and that sort of thing. Is, um, is, is Rotterdam, it, it seemed by the, by the, uh, by the DVD that Rotterdam was uh, a young uh, town. Is, is that maybe how you would characterize it? Um, I think young in spirit at least, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's an old town because uh, it goes back many, many, many hundreds of years. Um, but <coughs> um, I think in spirit it's a young town. The Hague, if I would have to characterize a number of the cities, because I'll, I'll explain a little bit about the rest of the Netherlands as well. Um, you have The Hague, which is the seat, seat of government, which is, uh, you could say, a sort of provincial type place in, in our context. I mean, perhaps I should first mentioned the, the, the scale, the difference in scale. Uh, if you look at Chicago and Chicago land, Chicago's about two, three million people, I believe, and Chicago land with everything around is about six or eight million, somewhere between that. In Holland alone, in the Netherlands, I should say, we have 16 million people. That's the whole country. Amsterdam is approximately close to a million people. Rotterdam, about six to seven hundred thousand. The Hague will probably be about five hundred, four or five hundred thousand. So, and these are the three biggest cities in the Netherlands, so it just doesn't compare. Um, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. If, if you're in Rotterdam and you want to go to Delft, which is in between uh, The Hague and, and, uh, and Rotterdam, it will take you 15 minutes by train. It will take you 15 minutes by car. If you go to Amsterdam, it will take you, well, the same as it would take me to get from downtown Chicago to Wilmet or Winnetka, north, north suburbs. Um, so the distances are much, much shorter which gives you an opportunity, if you have some free time, to travel around the country very easily. Public transport is, is excellent. Uh, it's, it's safe on the whole, it's cheap. Um, so, yeah, that, that's definitely an opportunity. So um, our, our hotel in downtown, yeah. how, how many minutes? You know? uh, it's been a while since I've been there, uh, that area, but it, I would say probably not more than 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And it's just, if I remember correctly, unless they've changed the lines, but. It's just one tram, you get on there and... Crawling to Zoom. Crawling to Zoom, yeah. It could, it could even be that there, there now is a metro, uh, a subway, I, I'm not sure. Rather than, rather than, yeah. Um, so the Hague is a seat, go a government, uh, a seat of government, uh, and therefore it's a bit more provincial. It's a bit more 
state, it's a bit more stately, and that sort of thing. It's got some beautiful old buildings. If you want to see old buildings, you can go there. Delft is one of those pretty little canals, uh, uh, villages with canals and old buildings. Amsterdam is more flamboyant. Amsterdam uh, is where a lot of the international tourists go. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, being the many coffee shops that you have there. Uh, again, that is not something we promote, of course, and, and I, I suggest you won't go there because you, you don't want to get into trouble either, of course, because it's different being a, a foreign tourist going to Amsterdam and go to one of these coffee shops because it's exciting. I, uh, you can't get into trouble. You can get into a lot of trouble. It's different for us being Dutch and living there because the police is really cracking down on foreign tourists to, to, who actually only come there for that sort of thing. Do they so realize what, what the concept coffee shop means? Oh, sorry. In Holland? Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think, I think the menu in a, in a coffee shop in Amsterdam is slightly different from Starbucks. Um, there are all sorts of things that you don't actually drink, uh, but you take in another way. Um, but just don't go there. I mean, it's, it's not worth it. It's, it's, uh, it's, you're from a different culture in that sense where that sort of thing is completely forbidden and uh, it's, it's a taboo and, and we have a different mentality about it. That's a cultural difference. We, have, we feel that we have uh, a policy that is actually beneficial to, to our, uh, our citizens. Your administration thinks in a different way. I'm not saying either one is wrong or right, but we both have a different approaches. And we do not promote foreigners, foreign tourists, to actually come and enjoy that stuff like we do, um, because that's not what it should be for. Now, does Rotterdam have the same kind of scene? No, not, not so much. You, if you want to find it, it's there. Um, but it's not quite the same. And, and I think partly uh, you have it in Amsterdam because it's a different culture there, it's a different atmosphere there, it's more flamboyant, it's more, more of a bigger attraction for foreign tourists, uh, let's say the general foreign tourist. Uh, there are some great museums there. There are some, some wonderful boat tours to the canals, the House of Rembrandt, and you name it, and it's all there. Uh, if you want to get a good flavor of, of, of Holland, Amsterdam is a great place to go. It's got many, many sides to it and many, many wonderful places to visit. Uh, I have to admit, it's got a great football team as well. Ajax is, is one of the most successful teams in, in the Dutch league, together with PSV and, and Feyenoord, as you mentioned. Um, so uh, the other place, uh, and to, to, to sort of square it off, it's, there's, there's Utrecht, which is, like you could say, the fourth largest city in, 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 in Holland. And to, together, these four are, are located on the west side of the country. It's on the coast. And that's what we call the Randstad. And the Randstad houses basically the majority of, of Dutch people. The rest of the country is far less populated than, uh, than that western side. Um, Yet we, we feel we're, we're a small country and that for us there's very little space and that's why we focus, in, in, like I mentioned earlier, on sustainability. We can't just have a similar society and that's not a, it's, I suppose the criticism, but it's an observation at least I would call it. The way here in the US you have a society where there is lots and lots and lots of waste and there's so much waste that people don't even care about it. Um, and that's something that we, we can't afford. We have to recycle, we have to look what we do with our waste and that sort of thing. So that's the sort of concepts that I try to introduce here during my job here. Um, yeah. any, any questions before I perhaps go on? Did, um, I, I know some of the guys were asking me um, whether it is, uh, whether there are certain uh, team jerseys in Rotterdam, let's say that you should not wear because of a uh, rivalry, maybe an Ajax jersey. I, that's, walking yeah. in. I wouldn't do that, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't guarantee your safety. Yes. In, uh, <laughs> is the biggest, the biggest rivalry is with, with Ajax? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. That's, it doesn't matter. It, I mean, at the end of the season, the, the league table always ends up with Ajax, PSP, and Feyenoord in the top five somewhere. It'd be a very, very strange league, and it's usually one, two, and three. Uh, it'd be a very strange season if, if one of these three would not be in the top five. Then there's definitely something wrong. Uh, you get the odd one, one of the teams who's got a good year from the other 14 or 15 teams that are in the league. Um, might have a good year or they might have a brilliant player or a young player who came up through the ranks and then he'll be bought by one of the bigger teams anyway, so uh, the next season. But um, the, the biggest rivalry is Feyenoord and Ajax. 
No, no in, within Rotterdam. Within Rotterdam, fine with Sparta, yes. Uh, yeah, not. Models, Sorry? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, within Rotterdam, that's, yeah, they're both teams from, from uh, it's like the Sox and the Cubs. Yeah. No, it's that sort of thing. Um, but within, on the national level, it's definitely ro the Rotterdam Amsterdam thing. Um, there's a, there's a, on all levels, there's a sort of friendly animosity, you could say, between Rotterdam and Amsterdam, not only on the football pitch. Um, there's a famous Dutch um, cultural figure, poet, uh, jazz DJ, comedian, Jules Delde. Uh, Ali mm, probably will know him. He's a Rotterdammer through and through. Um, th there's, uh, there's a comment he made, because uh, he's a very sarcastic comedian, he says, oh, do you know, asked about people from Amsterdam, he said, do you know, people from Amsterdam, are, don't you know, they're, they're nice, they're people just like you and me, they have a heart, uh, the only thing is it should be boiled and hang with a rope on the back, on their back, low enough that the dogs can eat it. <laughs> so, I, he's a bit extreme in his views and it was, it's purely sarcastic, but there is a friendly ass animosity at all levels between Rotterdam and Amsterdam. We had a visit in February, last February of, um, the Deputy Prime Minister of the Netherlands and five mayors of, of the Netherlands, amongst which Rotterdam and Amsterdam. And it was funny because I, for, for three days, I, I drove these guys around and we visited all sorts of people and institutions and meetings. And you know, in the coach, in the bus, or having a coffee somewhere, it was always the two, Rotterdam and the Amsterdam mayor, who are the two biggest mayors in, in Holland, of course, uh, always like, oh, you need this and you that and this, it, 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 but friendly, but friendly. Um, but definitely don't wear an IF shirt. Yeah, so, <laughs> shopping. Um, how about uh, with you know, the, the recent events that are going on in the US with, with respect to the rest of the world, is there, um, you know, we, we would always be concerned with um, how, how US citizens would be you know, looked at from other countries. Mm -hmm. there, I mean, obviously Holland and the US has always had an excellent relationship, mm -hmm. but is there, you know, any kind of uh, uh, tension with hmm. the Iraq and, and uh, yeah, um, you're right. The Netherlands and the U.S. have always been very good partners uh, through NATO, through business. Uh, the Netherlands is most recent figures have slightly changed it, but up until very recently, it was the third largest investor in the U.S. A lot of people don't know that, but. We, we create uh, many, many uh, thousands of jobs throughout the US. I mean, just, just here in Chicago, LaSalle, ABN AMRO is, is a Dutch company. I don't know if you have Peapot here, um, the, 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 the supermarket that you can online, you can order your stuff and they'll yeah, bring yeah. it back. They're, they're Dutch. Um, they're, there are many, many companies that most of you probably won't even realize are Dutch. I have a presentation, which I didn't bring, a PowerPoint at the end. We just show all the labels that people know. And a lot of the, la it's, it, it's from cookies to toothpaste to drink uh, to, you name it, a lot of it is Dutch. Um, so we're, we're very big in that. Um, we're good partners. The US and the Netherlands are very good partners. Um, yet, like I said before, the finger, we want to criticize the rest of the world because we think we know best, like every nation does. Um, but on the whole, I think you won't find sort of extreme animosity towards Americans. It depends a little bit on, on, on the American. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just speaking frankly here. I mean, I'm, I'm not on an agenda or whatever. I know you're going there. You're going to have a great time. Um, but I'll, I'll give you the perspective. That you have a perspective of the Netherlands. You have a perspective of Europe. Um, and because you're into soccer, into football, uh, you already mentioned that they, the Sparta was, was promoted. I didn't even know because I, I, I follow, I can't follow everything at the same time, but um, so you'll, have a, you'll know probably a little bit more than about the Netherlands perhaps, or at least about the football there than, than most Americans. What, we've, what I found after two years here, or initially, uh, very quickly after I arrived here, is how little you can actually find about what's happening in the rest of the world here in Chicago. You watch the, the NBC5 and the ABC whatever, 7 and whatever, the, the local news. And local news is a different context for you and for us. Local news for us is a few tens of thousands of people or 100,000 people. Local news here is like 12 million people. 
So that's more, more or less three thirds of a country, three three quarters of our country. Um, so I, I spoke to one of the anchors from NBC Five and, and, a, and a, a journalist from the Chicago Tribune. I said, "I'm amazed. I mean, I open the Tribune, and I can't find anything about the rest of the world, or very little. All I find is America in Iraq, America in Afghanistan, America in wherever you are, and perhaps a bit about Israel as well. And then you might get a little paragraph here or there about anything that's happening in the rest of the world. So to us, Americans are very insular." And I'm doing stereotypes here. Yeah? So Americans are considered very insular. You're the best in the world. You're the biggest in the world. You're the strongest in the world. You're the richest in the world. And that shows when you go abroad. It might not show for you. But the typical American stereotype that a lot of people in Europe see is the loud American with the screaming Hawaii shirt so, and uh, the, the flag somewhere on one of his items of clothing, and that's <laughs> which, I mean, look around you, none of you are dressed like that or behave like that. So it's stereotype I'm doing here. So if you meet that criteria, if you meet that stereotype by being the loud American in a bar, in a, in a shop or whatever, then you might find sort of, not hostility, but sort of dismissing. Yet, if you just a normal person, like most of you probably are, you won't find any problems. Uh, would, would be my would be my guess. I think they all look like regular Dutch. Guys. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Honestly, yeah. well, you what you find no though problem. is, I mean, I haven't seen <laughs> most of you standing up, but what you'll find in, in Holland is, I think the Dutch are at the moment the tallest nation. That's true. Yes. Um, yeah. And it was it was great for my wife because uh, my wife is uh, is, is uh, only a couple of inches shorter than me. I'm six feet. And coming from the UK, on the whole, people are smaller. And she was always, as, as a woman, as a girl, she always towered above all the boys. And you know, they don't like that. So it was quite, she was quite happy to come to Holland. And suddenly, she, we were standing in a bar. I said, oh, I have to look up, you know, instead of having to look down at these guys. Um, so you'll find some, I know you're not interested, you're there for the football and the soccer, but you'll find some big strapping lass lasses there. No, you, the girls are just towering above you for, for some of you back. <laughs> so that's a difference. You have to be on the, on the lookout, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you might come back with some folks. <laughs> 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 Does anybody have any further questions for Mr. Herzbach? No? Any other questions? Well, I want to thank you. No, yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Very, very informative. Uh, we, have just, we have just one more thing to uh, present to Mr. Herzbach. This is the uh, the pennant that we will be exchanging with all the uh, with all the teams that we play uh, for each of the games, and we'd like to give you one as well for your thank time. You thank you very much. Great. Oh. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get one picture out in the hallway. Okay. Like the guys in the stairs. Well, Josh, Josh will set us up. Okay. Um, thank, you so much. thank you very much. I, I've got something here which I want to hand out in a minute. Um, I wish you all the best. I hope you'll get to the finals. Uh, is there a Dutch team playing as well? We're playing, uh, we're playing against University of Groningen in our group. Okay. So, so, so. Obviously, I hope they will win. But I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you win, win, that will be good for me, good enough for me as well. It, it's not good news. The two-time defending champion is a German team. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, th that's another we'll thing. Try to Don't pretend to be German. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the football, as you know, the, the football history between Holland and Germany is not a good one. Yeah. Let me just get a few things here. That, um, it's okay. 